Hello again, friends, and welcome back to round three of the Harry Potter Quiz Night 2022, celebrating 25 years of the adventures of young Harry, the boy who lived in association with the Shetland Library. Oh, forgive me, I just happened to look at the screen and see that I have left my chilling glasses on. No, it is not Roy Wood, he of wizard fame. Where do you think he got the name for the band? Hmm? No, no. I was chilling with my homeboys in the common room and quite forgot the time. Professor Flitwick had some rather sick tunes to play us. No, I don't mean they were good. I mean that they really did make one sick. Listen to them. Terrible on the violin. If you're all ready, I shall dispense with the attempts at humour. Terrible as it is, I know, I know. Better wizard than one was a comic, I can tell you. Are you all ready for round three? You are? Good. We're halfway through, you know. Only 20 more to go to find out who are the super fun fans amongst you. So, round three, question one. Who unwittingly gave Hermione permission to take most potentate potions out of the restricted section in the school library? I am, of course, reading it phonetically. It is pronounced most potent in Old English, but it is written most potente potions. Once again, question number one. Who unwittingly gives Hermione permission to take most potente potions out of the restricted section in the school library? It's an easy one. Come on, come on, come on. Question number two, if you're all ready. When is Harry's birthday? I should give you some choices here. I am not a harsh man. When is Harry's birthday? All you clever clogs have had time to write it down, and now I shall give the rest of them some options. Is it the 1st of March? Is it the 31st of July? Is it the 1st of April? Or is it the 31st of October? Well, I'm giving no clues. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is for super fans after all. Question number two once again. When is Harry's birthday? 1st of March, 31st July, 1st of April, or 31st of October? Question number three. How many times was nearly headless Nick hit in the neck with a blunt axe? Oh, goodness me. Once again, I shall give you a chance to write down the correct answer for all you clever clogs, and then I shall give options. Superfans should know this instantly. How many times was nearly headless Nick hit in the neck with a blunt axe? Slytherins will, of course, cheat, most likely. Or say, I knew that, I knew that. So, was it 10? Was it 15 and a half? Was it 45? Or was it 21? Hmm. Once again, how many times was nearly headless Nick 
hit in the neck with a blunt axe. Ten times, fifteen and a half times, forty-five times, or twenty-one times. Moving swiftly on to question number four. What is the name of the sweet that Dudley eats, horrible child, when the Weasleys visit Privet Drive in the Goblet of Fire? What is the name of the sweet that Dudley eats when the Weasleys visit Privet Drive in the Goblet of Fire? Once again, I shall give you time to write down the correct answers before I shall give you some options. You can easily see that the current headmaster of uh, Hogwarts, Professor McGonagall, wrote these questions. She's far too kind to her students. Yes, you are. You are, really. What is the name of the tweet? The sweet tweet? That's something else entirely, I believe. What is the name of the sweet that Dudley eats when the Weasleys visit Privet Drive in the Goblet of Fire? Is it Muckle Muggle Melodies? Is it Tun Tung Toffee? Is it half pound hairballs? Or is it levitating lozenges? Those options one more time for the name of the sweet that Dudley Dursley eats when the Weasleys visit Privet Drive in the Goblet of Fire. Is it Muckle Muggle Melodies? What a wonderful name. Tun Tung Toffee, Half Pound Hairballs, or Levitating Lozenges. I'm sure I'm not the only one right now who feels rather peckish. Mm. It is not for the Half Pound Hairballs. Moving on to question number five. If you need more time, press pause now. Question five. What is the address of the Order of the Phoenix HQ? Which stands for Headquarters, of course. What is the address of the Order of the Phoenix Headquarters? Number and road name, please. If you can't remember the number, I'll give you half a point for the road name. Let it not be said that Dumbledore is unkind. What is the address of the Order of the Phoenix headquarters? Already? Good. Oh, my goodness. Question six is a doozy. Who is Ginny's first boyfriend? Who is Ginny's first boyfriend? I shall give you ten seconds to write down the correct answer, and then I shall give options once again using this rather smashing thing called a pocket clock given to me by the older Weasley. He's very fond of these things. I don't know if it will ever take off. Newfangled contraptions are so unreliable. I think that's 10 seconds. Very hard to count on these things. Now then. Pocket clock set to one side. And I shall give you the options. Who is Ginny's first boyfriend? Is it Zacharias Smith? Is it Victor Crumb? Is it Dean Thomas? Or is it Michael Corner? 
At least one of these names has been in her detention regularly during his time at Hogwarts, I can tell you. So, once again, who is Ginny's first boyfriend? Is it Zacharias Smith? Victor Crumb? Dean Thomas? Or Michael Corner? Ready? Really? You got it? Good. Smashing it hot. A nice, simple, easy one for question seven. How many brothers does Ron have? Ron Weasley, that is, not Ron Johnson. Ron Johnson is the plumber who looks after the plumbing at Hogwarts, in case you didn't know. Ronald to his friends. How many brothers does Ron Weasley have? Hmm? Are you counting? Do you need to? Do you need more time? Press pause now then. Time's a wasting, as they say. Question eight. How many points is a golden snitch worth? That's an easy one for all you Quidditch fans out there. And I understand it's not taken off as a local sport, even amongst muggles. However do they manage that? I would pay good money to see that, I think. Or perhaps I wouldn't. Once again, how many points is a golden snitch worth? Just the one golden snitch, of course. After all, when you catch it, game is over. Ready? Good. Question number nine. Who takes offence at the symbol worn by Xenophilus Lovegood to Bill and Fleur's wedding? Who is it who takes offence at the symbol worn by Xenophilus Lovegood to Bill and Fleur's wedding? Do you remember that one? That's the wedding that was broken up by those rather nasty bounders. Still and all. Then if it was love good, yeah, they are rather rum cold, I can tell you. Lovely as a fruitcake. Even amongst wizards. Lovely daughter, a lovely girl. Once again, question nine. Who takes offence at the symbol worn by Xenophilus Lovegood to Bill and Fleur's wedding? The symbol worn by Xenophilus Lovegood to Bill and Fleur's wedding offended someone there. Can you remember who? I expect you all do. You're all terribly, terribly clever. And lastly, in question in round three, question ten, an easy one. Still and all, there are options given by Professor McGonagall. Very easy on you all. So I shall give you ten seconds on the pocket clock to begin with, once I've asked the question, for all you smarty pants. You really all should know this anyway. Quite one of my favourite scenes in the movie and in the book, both. Movies, I should say. Now, question 10. What type of car is Mr Weasley's flying car? Hmm? 10 seconds on the pocket clock. Look at that thing go. Amazing. And to think there's no magic involved, not even a hamster in the back of it. <laughs> Fantastic. So, once again, question 10, 
What type of car is Mr. Weasley's flying car? Is it a Ferrari Testarossa? I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. Ferrari Testarossa? Is it a Volkswagen Beetle? Volkswagen Beetle? Is it a Ford Anglia? Ford Anglia? Or is it Rolls Royce? Rolls Royce? Those options once again. What type of car is Mr. Weasley's flying car? Is it a Ferrari Testarossa? Is it a Volkswagen Beetle? Is it a Ford Anglia? Or is it a Rolls Royce? What do you think? What do you know, more importantly? So, the final round is coming up soon. One more little break. Pause in your case, break in Jan's case. For a drop of beverage to wet one's whistle. So why one's whistle needs to be wet is either here or there. And I shall see you again very shortly. Toodle pit for now. Be right back in a jiff.